everybody welcome back to the channel so uh i mainly want to talk about uh sticker bombing today um but a quick little update on the car so i put on the new intercooler uh it is bigger than the stock one i'll put up a uh a comparison video right now it's about an inch thicker maybe a quarter of an inch wider uh, so i'll put that in there right now put in all the intercooler piping uh, originally I was going to make a video on putting that on and as well as priming the new turbo oil feed line um, what I was gonna do is uh, since I had to prime the line I was gonna take that opportunity to do a compression test while I'm cranking the engine over anyways but I was having so much problems with the like the intercooler piping because a lot of the parts were broken so I kind of had to figure out where things were supposed to be and kind of make new little brackets for it and stuff like that and um, and my battery was dying so I had to kind of trickle charge it keep kind of going back and forth it was just too hectic to be filming anything but um, yeah I, I, I bolted everything up and then I left the return line open so while I was cranking it, I would kind of come over, check, see if oil was coming down. Once the oil was coming down, I would put it back, uh, screw it back into the block, and then all that set up. Um, I got the new intake on. Um, I still have to make a bracket for it, just to kind of hold it into place. This is okay for now, but it's too. This piece of aluminum that uh, it came with is too, like, thin and not very strong. So I got to figure out some way other way to mount it, mount it I might mount it to this metal or not metal uh, plastic uh, wiring face thing or I might keep this location I ended up having to grind down a couple studs in here and take off a bracket here that was for the old air box um, yeah sounds good so all that setup is pretty much drivable now I just got to put on the fenders and do a couple other things but yeah that's not really what this is about so um sticker bombing i've never sticker bombed before so this is kind of my first time i have a couple tips that'll probably be pretty useful um mainly the tips are for automotive use not like sticker bombing things like ipads laptops that kind of thing um so for sticker bombing car parts um, you're gonna want to make sure that your surface oh, okay, another reason why I'm sticker bombing uh, this particular these particular fenders is these are replacement fenders so they're not like the strong thick OEM fenders they're very thin um, they weren't clear coated to begin with when I bought the car so instead of trying to, I don't know, paint it and having it look uh, decent, I figured I'd go this route. I, I like all the colors and it's kind of racer, but whatever. Um, so I finished this one and learned a lot through the process. Um, for one, your like, it's best not to try and like go around an object with the sticker because you run the risk of the adhesive not, because it's putting more pressure on the sticker itself so it like parts could bend up. Um, only focus on the areas that are gonna be seen. So at like little ridges like this, they're not gonna be noticeable. So, but like, like see even there, it's, it's peeling up a tiny bit. Um, don't go too far to the edge. You might think that it's going to be noticeable, but it's really not when it's on the car. So don't go very close to the edge. Um, the surface that you're putting the stickers on 
make sure it's really clean using alcohol or something that evaporates quickly. But like an, an ice purple alcohol is the best. Um, make sure it's clean and make sure the surface isn't rough. So what I did was I sanded it down a little bit just because the, the surface wasn't clear coated. Um, make sure that it's sanded and it's smooth because the sticker will adhere to it better. Um, if you want, you can even put clear coat down first and then sand that, make sure it's smooth. Um, you can even use, I should have used a uh, adhesive promoter. Uh, put that down so the stickers will adhere to it better. These areas aren't that bad. Um, it's mainly the areas where they had to be curved. Like in here, I had to like, I ended up having to cut a lot around edges, um, things like that. Um, but yeah, I would not recommend kind of curving the sticker to go around edges. When it's on the car, things like a little bit away from the edge, it's not going to be noticeable. It's going to be less noticeable than something that's peeling. Um, so this, this is what is in the engine bay. I'm going to have to take these off because there's a lot of ridges in here. Things aren't really adhering properly. Maybe I'll leave them on until they fall off, but I figured it would be cool to kind of match everything, but it, it's not really working that well. Um, here is okay because there's, it's like half the sticker and then half the other like third of the sticker is curved over. That turns it fine, but if you leave a little bit of the sticker over the ridge just to kind of make it even, it's not going to look good. It's going to peel up. Um, don't just sticker bomb and then not put any type of sealant over it. Uh, the best thing, you gotta make sure you use a sealant um, with UV protection in it, like any automotive clear coat. Um, this is what I was using. Any automotive clear coat is meant to be on a vehicle, so it'll have UV protectants in it. Um, a lot of other clear coats will say if there is UV protection in it. Um, I have this too, I thought it looked kind of cool. It makes like a, like a glitter effect in it. I'm pretty sure this has, I'm pretty sure this has a UV protection in it. Um, you can even get like um, an enamel lacquer or something to kind of paint over it. Um, but yeah, that's really important to be, have clear coat over it. And the clear coat will also help push everything down and make it stay into place. Because if, if it's on a vehicle and you're going, like if you're going fast, obviously, obviously you're in a car, so there's less chance of anything peeling up. It'll make everything stick together better. Um, yeah. Uh, so another thing that I did was, because you're touching the stickers, you're, you might leave some fingerprints. But what I did was I tried to um, clean it first to get the smudges away, but don't do that. Don't clean anything because any type of liquid or anything can go over and get through the little cracks and it could peel up easier then. So don't even worry about the smudges. The clear coat will most likely get rid of it anyways. Like I've been looking at this and I don't see like any smudges underneath. Um, as long as you do it within like the same day, there's not going to be like dust or contaminants really on it that's going to accumulate fast enough. Like I've had my door open and I haven't had anything really like any issues. I blew it off with a tiny bit of compressed air from a distance. That got away like any surface dust, but other than that, I wouldn't go cleaning it. Um, yeah, because you're just going to run the risk of it peeling up and getting through the cracks. Um, as far as how to like put the stickers in place, uh, you're probably going to want to go along with like that, the uh, kind of the... So this, this is a fender, so you're going to probably want to work from the top down. Um, it's also good to kind of like tilt some stickers like I did this one. It makes it look kind of better. Like tilt this one that way, 
and then put another one to the right. It kind of mixes things up a bit. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, just make sure everything's clean before you start. Uh, overlapping is good. It makes everything look a lot, a lot better. Uh, any stickers you don't like, put them down first, and then just use it more of like a background. Um, yeah, any other tips that I think of, I'll add to this. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Peace. Have a good one. Yeah, a couple other things. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you create yourself enough time to be able to do this because this is, it does take a lot of time. Um, from yesterday and today, I'm probably in and around maybe eight hours, something like that. Um, yes, some people will lay out their stickers first. Um, but I think, I don't know, I think that's kind of a waste of time. Um, I would just do it as you go. Uh, yeah, don't fold over your corners. Um, you might think it'll, like as I thought it looked better if I kind of folded it over just so the whole thing looks like, like a, a piece of wrap that you just cut but it's going to be way too difficult for the with your folding in around uh, the, the contours of it. Uh, even here, like this did not turn out very well. I picked like a sticker that you wouldn't nearly know if it was bent or not, like the Rubik's Cube. There's like weird angles there, so I, I cut it. And like I cut like a triangle out and kind of put it in. I mean, it's okay, but honestly, I don't even think I'm gonna go down that far because these, that's just gonna be way too difficult. It's gonna peel up in no time. And it's not gonna look very good. Um, get yourself a good razor blade. A sharp one or even like the, the sculpting ones that kind of look kind of like a scalpel those are easy to use too mine is kind of old but get yourself a new one don't be afraid to cut because if you go down to the metal if you're like right here I cut around this area I'm going a lot farther out than I normally would just because like it catches Like if it starts catching, just cut more off. Like here, I had to do a lot of extra cutting and even some of it is still like left a tiny bit of a lip. Um, yeah, um, also make sure that you wash your hands periodically too. Just to get any like dirt, any tight, like any more oil off your hands so you're not rubbing it into the sticker itself. I found that was easy. So maybe like every hour or two, I went and washed my hands back out um, and make sure you have a good workstation do it near a table or something like this um, this isn't really ideal it's kind of bending and not very high but make sure you get yourself a good workspace to do it on um, yeah set yourself enough time uh, when you do cut any lips anything away from edges don't worry about because when you cut you're gonna think oh I'm gonna go into the metal but don't worry about that because you're gonna be clear coating it and the clear coat's gonna go in there and seal it so don't worry about cutting deep um, you don't want you don't want to make sure you get a nice crisp cut so don't worry about going deep you're gonna you're gonna be clear coating anyways uh, yeah this one I'm almost done with I think it turned out a lot better than that one. Um, and when you're clear coating, do maybe, like you can't overdo the clear coat. It might be a bit expensive, but I'd rather have a huge, like thick shell on it that have not enough. Uh, do a couple light coats and then do your final couple coats fairly heavy. Um, 
read your can, follow the directions that it states. Uh, yeah, do do a couple um, light coats to kind of get it, everything to adhere to it, and then go ahead and do your final heavyish coats. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. Like this, I I did a bunch of coats and. But I think I did too many light coats, so it was kind of rough, but now there's spots where it's getting like smoother, and the more clear coats you do, the better it's going to turn out. Uh, and then after, you can wet sand it and buff it, and it'll be just like any other automotive clear coat, it'll be nice and smooth. Um, but yeah, I, I hope this helps. Uh, kind of little tips that I picked up along the way, kind of do's and don'ts. Uh, this one turned out a lot nicer. Uh, but yeah, find it helpful. Leave a like. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right.